What have you got this morning? Trousers. <laughs> Freeze. <laughs> Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to a brand new video. I thought I would do a vlog today. Um, I know I vlogged last, well on Sunday, I did it, was it Sunday or Wednesday? I'm getting confused. Sunday, I did my like Hello September cosy um, video, so I did mention in there that I will be decorating at some point this week for autumn and that will probably be Sunday's upload. But today I thought I would just kind of inject another vlog. I'm gonna get ready this morning with you. And one thing I didn't include in my Hello September, I forgot, hurry up, it's known. <laughs> wow, I look really pale on camera. I don't know if it's the lighting's being thrown off. One thing I didn't include with within my Hello September video, which I do usually do, is like a segment of monthly favourites. And honestly, for no other reason than that video was already quite long and I thought I would just include it in today's vlog instead. So I've got a couple that I wanted to mention. I thought I would get ready with you this morning and just show you some beauty faves, talk through some TV, recent TV finds um, that I've been loving. I'm gonna start with just popping on some SPF. This is a new favorite I've been loving from Summer Fridays, SPF 30, this one. And we have been blessed with some sunshine, as we always do. I feel like every year when it gets round to me decorating for autumn, I find I'm doing it whilst sweltering in the heat. Um, but I'm actually not complaining because I do feel like as much as I love autumn, the rain, cozy weather, I do feel like I like a bit of summer so that I can appreciate the autumn all the more. And let's face it, since June, we haven't really had any sun. So it is quite nice just to have a few days of it so that we can afterwards be into the full swing of things with autumn and just fully appreciate it because we've not had a chance to get away this summer either. I know we've like talked about it, but we're just the sort of people that, well, because Tom crickets all summer, we end up just kind of like life just moves on. We need to either get something booked. And I said that too, Tom. I said I'd quite like to... Have a look, there's one hotel in specifically that I want to stay in that looks lovely that I want to book for maybe July next year. But we've got a couple of things going on. We've got my brother's wedding in July, so we'll do it after that. We've got the Hen and Stag Do's in June. Um, we probably will go away maybe January time as well because we do like to get away for like mine and Tom's birthday around that time. I'm gonna go in with this Vita Liberata. I briefly showed it in last the last vlog that I did, but this is in the shade Light. It's a really nice sheer kind of base to a foundation or for like no makeup makeup days, just on its own, maybe a bit of concealer. It's a really nice consistency and yeah, feel like not many people talk about this, but it's really, really nice. I just use a fluffy brush to blend that out. Um, but yeah, so that is one little beauty favourite that I've been loving. I am probably going to pop a little bit of foundation on today with it though. Oh god, I got myself in the eye then. Oh no, has that gone on my contact lens? Contact lens girls will know that if you get makeup on a contact lens, it's like blurry until you replace it. Yeah, I feel like I'm going to have to accept that that's a wasted contact lens and I'm going to have to go replace it with another one. Literally got this product all over it. Has it gone? I feel like we might be all right actually. So that's the kind of like base, a real nice kind of sheen it gives to your skin. And I will just pop a bit of foundation on, just a tiny bit though, but which one should I go in with? I'm gonna go in with the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk because I have got an event on to uh, like a lunch with Joe Malone, which I wanted to just take you with me and see what we get up to there. Um, so yeah, a bit more makeup today. I think I'm gonna wear just like a nice lightweight linen dress, nice and floaty and comfortable, especially as we're going for a lunch at the Ivy. There was spoilers, I think it's gonna be like a three course lunch as well. So um, yeah, 
a nice lightweight linen dress from Zara that I'm gonna pop on. Good catch up with Lydia because she's going as well. And I might actually en route take my car to go have a quick valet because it's in desperate need. Um, so yeah, I sometimes go in with this fluffy brush to blend out foundation or another one that I've been loving, this sponge, it's a bit dirty, but from Refai, um, if I want to apply it with the sponge, but yeah, for now. Nice and big fluffy brush is what I've been using. My trusty favourite, as always, with concealer, just the Collection Lasting Perfection Concealer in shade 2. And I always think less is more with concealer, so I just pop a little bit on, just like that. It's quite bright, this one, so, like, in terms of against my skin tone, so it's kind of more of a highlight as well. They yeah. are the place that I pop it. So yeah, that's the plan for today, this morning. Car Valet, Jo Malone. I might have a quick look in the White Company. Have a look at their new autumn fragrances that they've got. Um, maybe a quick browse in Home Sense as well. And then back home this afternoon. And one thing I do want to get done, which I did in a couple of vlogs ago when I did my like pantry organising sort through, is I bought some spice jars from Amazon. So I want to at some point switch those over just so that my pantry organised is kind of complete, apart from the larder unit. For brows, I'm going to use the Benefit Precisely My Brow Pencil. Um, I thought I'd mention some TV favourites that I've been loving. I've actually come across quite a few in the last month or so. Um, firstly, Channel 4. Um, I've been watching the series called Alone, which is like um, about 10 people that were basically cast away in the middle of nowhere to basically fend for themselves. And it's like a competition show whereby the person who lasts the longest in the wilderness with nothing other than themselves and a camera. And I think they got to like take in some equipment and they each chose something different. So they have to fend for themselves, they have to build their own shelters, they have to find their own food. Um, and it, yeah, it's a survival show. If you love that kind of thing, it's actually really good. And the, I'm, I think I'm about like five, five or six episodes in, and I've like been having to wait for each week, but if you've never watched it, you'll be able to binge it because obviously it's on catch up now on all four. Um, but they won't know. Basically, they just tap out when they're ready to leave and they just call for help. So the winner is the one who lasts the longest, but they won't know that they've won. So I'm really intrigued to see how it's going to finish. But that's been really good. A couple of things on BBC. Firstly, really light and easy watch is the Ultimate Wedding Planner. It's got Fred from First Dates in. It's got, oh, what's she called off Dragon's Den? Sarah, someone, um, as judges. And they basically have these wedding planners help organise people's weddings. And it's just like a really nice, easy, like, watch. Another one on BBC that I watch is um, Wolf. So good. If you like the kind of crime thriller, six part BBC type series, then you have to watch Wolf. It is so gripping, twisting, turning in the storyline. And uh, I love watching these crime shows and I'm not gonna lie, I would say that I'm pretty good at sussing out who did what. And this one had me. I had no idea when the ending, the way that it ended, like when the way that it came together in the final episode, wow. Really, really good. I'm just gonna go in with that hula bronze on my cheeks. It's kind of like two stories that kind of intertwine, but essentially it's a, uh, you follow these two criminals that go into the home of a family, hold them capture, and yeah, it kind of unfolds within their house of who these criminals potentially are and who the family is. And it's just, it's a really good watch. I've got two Netflix recommendations. The first one I saw probably about a month ago now. So it's been a while, maybe a few weeks rather than a full month, but The Deepest Breath. Wow. It's one, it's like a docu-series, but it's, no, it's not a series, it's like a docu-film. So it's only about an hour and a half. And it's about these um, free divers that go down with one breath and it's how deep they can go and it's 
a competition it's like a real thing that they are like holding their breath for around four minutes and it's kind of sad it's kind of the story is as it unfolds you kind of think all oh, has something happened here and then there's a bit of a twist and yeah really like edge of your seat kind of documentary so i would recommend that one and then also on netflix that i've just finished last night is angela black it's been on there a while, I think. Again, I think it was probably like a, I think, it was like a BBC six part series. Maybe it wasn't, maybe it was for Netflix, but kind of touches on domestic, well, it does touch on domestic violence and it's quite a satisfying ending as well. So I feel like I would recommend that. I'm just gonna go in with the Giorgio Armani blush, the Neo Nude in shade 50. What did I, I started last night on Amazon Prime actually, Summer I Turn Pretty, which I know everyone's talking about. And I honestly thought, I don't think this one's gonna be for me. It's kind of like a love drama, like teen. Love it, <laughs> absolutely love it. So I'm on series one and I think I, I'm about four episodes in. So yeah, I binged through a few last night and yeah, really liked it. I'm gonna use the iconic illuminating drops for a bit of highlight. And then again, another easy watch. Well, I say easy, it's actually not easy at all. It needs your concentration, but you can just have it on in the background if you're like pottering around or whatever. But ITV, so on ITVX, the 1% Club, it's one of these like ITV game shows. So it's like afternoon TV, daytime TV, but I've just been watching a couple of episodes on catch up and I've been... I have watched them because of TikTok. I keep getting the TikTok videos of the 1% Club questions and I'm really good at them. It kind of makes me want to go on the show because I would say 90% of the questions I get right. And it's one of those um, game show, quiz shows type things whereby it's kind of like verbal reasoning or yeah, it's they ask you questions and the whole principle is 1%, the 1% Club, 1% of the people asked would get the final question right and it's for prize money essentially. Sorry, that was just the cookie highlight from Benefit. But the questions start at like 90% of these people will get this question right, 80%, 60% and it goes down until 1% and yeah, I'm pretty good at it, I'm not gonna lie. But yeah, that's that would be a good show for those of you that also like a puzzle or a game or something like that because you guys know I love that. It's a bit more of this bronze. I think I might just go with bronzer for eyeshadow today. Then for lips, my ultimate fave combo I'll go with today, which is just my number seven lip pencil in nude with some Carmex lip balm. And then my mascara that I've been using recently is the Telescopic by L'Oreal. I can see my batteries flashing though. So I'm gonna finish my mascara lips off camera show you how it looks in a sec when I go get a spare battery. Here we go, finished makeup. My eyelashes as well, I thought about this when I was putting on my mascara. I feel like they've grown and I'm trying to think what I can put it down to and the only thing I can think of is potentially because I've been taking the hair skin and nail gummies from my vitamins like really consistently and yeah, I feel like would that contribute to hair growth? on your eyes maybe but anyway yeah my eyelashes with the telescopic mascara look like so lip balm and uh lip liner all finished look slick back today i've actually just clipped it up at the set for, for the second but for the moment what am i saying i've just clipped it up for now but i probably will do a bit of a better slick back one for lunch but anyway just before we head out to lunch oh this is my dress by the way I have probably shown it before and I've actually got quite a bit of wear out of this this year. Well, I say this year, I actually found it in like the back of my wardrobe towards the end of like August, which obviously we weren't really wearing dresses in August because of the rain. Um, but I had a couple of occasions where I wore it. It's just Zara, but last year. And it's a kind of like sagey green colour. And we're going to lunch with Jimlin for a release of like a new pair fragrance so I thought a little pop of green it might be quite nice but yeah before we head off to lunch I wanted to um firstly just mention three more kind of like monthly favorite type products so this one I actually got in a glossy box the Aveeno 
body moisturizer. I don't think I've ever used any products from Aveeno before, but I've heard good things. It is for like normal to dry skin, which I would say I just have like normal skin, but I'm not a moisturizer person. Like I don't moisturize very often, which is probably bad, but I just, I don't like this sticky feeling. So like after a shower, I'm a talc powder. Like I like dry, I wanna feel dry. Um, but I used this um, for the first time a few days ago when we were popping out and I had shorts on and I thought let me just pop some moisturizer on my legs. Grab this one which was from a glossy box. Love it. Really nice, soaks into the skin really well. It's not like super scented, it's just really simple and I really like the formula of it. Oh, I got a new nail color as well. I leave this one linked below. I thought for autumn, you know, go a bit more chocolate brown. I don't know how I feel about it though. I don't know if I like dark nails on me, but um, yeah, so I don't know if I'll use it again. I feel like I just need a lighter brown. I need a good, I quite like OPI and like maybe builder in a bottle type gel products. I do my own nails. So any recommendations for girlies that do nails or that do their own nails for a nice neutral brownie nude color that's not quite this dark, but is a gel polish. Let me know. Another glossy box find as well. I had a good month for glossy box. And this is just recently I've been using this. The last couple of showers I've had, but I thought I'd mention it anyway. Kept the box, daily round silicone scrubber, but this is what it looks like. It's got a little kind of like hole there for you to be able to hold it with your finger. So just to use this as like a body buffer, body scrubber, especially if you're a tan wearer, if you just want to like exfoliate it off. Because it's silicon, it just helps with um, being more hygienic than like a body poof, like normal one that I used to use. So I wanted to try this, see if I prefer it. And I do like it. I'm getting on with it so far. So I thought I'd mention that. And then last but not least, a recommendation from my bestie, from Lydia. She said I should pick this up and I thought I've heard good things about it. It's from Roxy Nafusi. Seven Steps to Living Your Best Life. It's called Manifest, just a short little book, a nice, easy read. I think she's done a, another one that's in like a navy called Delving Deeper or something. And also, has she got like a journal of some kind? I think she has. Um, so anyway, yeah, I've been loving this. I've just kind of been picking it up as and when. It's one of those that you can just kind of like dip in and out of. Um, but yeah, I thought I'd mention that because so far, so good. I feel like, well, let me read the back. Are you ready to unlock the magic of manifesting and unleash your limitless potential? This book is the essential guide for anyone and everyone wanting to feel more empowered in their lives. In just seven simple steps, you can understand the true art of manifestation and create the life you have always dreamed of. A meeting of science and wisdom, manifesting is self-development practice that will enable you to reach your goals, cultivate self-love and live your best life. And I'm all about self-love empowering your I don't know your desires to thrive not just survive so if you feel like that sounds a bit of you then I will leave that linked below anyway without further ado let me sort out my hair into a proper proper bun and let's get on the road let's head over to Carvel at first then Jo Malone and then who knows if we do a bit of shopping afterwards I usually end up stumbling into the shops, I'm not gonna lie. Inseparable, we will 
I just made myself mm, a cozy drink to get in the cozy mood, even though it's a scorcher outside today. But mm, these new Aero things, I actually got sent in a PR package, but I've seen them in most of the supermarkets actually. I thought they were going to be really hard to get hold of. They're not. The Aero honeycomb. Uh, mochas, delicious, and with a mocha, always love a bit of cream on top, a bit of whipped cream, and then I've got this cinnamon sugar dusting that I got from Tesco's as well. I'm gonna enjoy my cozy drink outside in the sunshine. It's always the same, isn't it? This time of the year, we're just kind of accepting the fact that our summer's been rubbish, and we start thinking, actually, you know what? It might as well be autumn. Let's just welcome it. And the sun comes back. But anyway, I had a lovely lunch at Jo Malone. I did get some goodies and we did do a little bit of shopping afterwards as well. So I'll show you those bits once I've had my little coffee break in the sunshine. Okay, I've just come back upstairs. Guys, last night, oh my God, last night. So, let me just move you down here. I saw possibly the biggest spider I have ever seen in the bathroom last night. Literally, we came up to bed and I just saw it as soon as I opened the door on the floor on my bath mat and just went, Tom, because his bathroom's up stairs on the top floor. I went, Tom, I really, really need your help here right now. And he went, oh, spider season again, isn't it? I just felt like he knew what I was talking about. The urgency in my voice, you could tell it was a spider, but it was huge. And ever since I've been on edge, I'm like sitting on the floor, I'm like, could there be one <laughs> lurking in the background somewhere? Ooh. Anyway, um, let's share with you, shall we, some of the bits that I picked up. I feel like I firstly have to thank Jo Malone, of course, for very kindly inviting us to what was a lovely lunch. And they gifted us a little goodie bag, which I just love, a Jo Malone purchase. I think they make great gifts. How cute is this box in the shape of a pear? So obviously it was to um, sort of celebrate the launch of their latest addition to the fragrance family it's within the pear range they've obviously got the english pear of freesia which is like a popular very popular classic scent so they've done a new take on that and they have launched this fragrance which is english pear and sweet pea so it's probably a bit sweeter i think yeah oh do i yeah i think i prefer the new one over the two it's English Paraphrasia is a bit more floral, so for me, I'm drawn to this one, which even though it's sweeter, which I don't usually go for sweeter scents, I feel like this, I know we're leading into autumn now, but this is actually the perfect fragrance for like today. Sun out, but we're leading into autumn. It's the very last of the summer days with the pear leading into autumn, like, like fruit, fruitiness is, um, yeah beautiful so thank you Simon. and how gorgeous is that bottle as well so so pretty um so yeah they gifted us that but then they also um gave us this really intrigued me because i've never seen anything like this before and it's basically um uh, this is an english paraphrasia and it's a scented body powder so basically I, I just never heard of it before. There's a big pan like this of powder, which is shimmery. I would say it's not like super, super shimmery, but there's a brush that comes with it here in the bag. It's a powder that's scented in the English paraphrasia that you can just like, I don't, I don't know where to put it, but let's just pop a bit on the chest. You can like kind of just use it as a body brush, pop it on your body, and then you can layer it as well with the fragrance. So it's like layering sense upon sense to making sure that you're nice and scented. Then Lydia and I went to the White Company. We had a quick look. I did see a couple of new fragrances. I did stick to just the oils. 
Um, and I got, so these are £10 full price, but I got 15% off. Just if you are signed up to their mailing list, all you have to do is go onto their website, scroll to the bottom, like that's how you request a brochure. You just sign up, put your email in, and often they'll send out little kind of um, little leaflet booklets with like a 15% off code. I don't always receive those in the mail, but whenever I go into store to buy something, you just give them your postcode and they can search you, find your email, and they'll just tell you if there's an offer on and give it to you. So yeah, he um, he actually took my postcode and he said, oh, and you've got 15% off today as well. And I was like, perfect. So I've got two new scents. They actually have quite a few new scents. Obviously the autumn's back in. Um, the Noir and Blanc, which are like their higher end premium ranges. I actually didn't love those scents though, so I didn't pick them up, but they've got oils now. I picked up these two. So Bergamot and Cedar is their new scent that they had at the start of the, like at the store entrance when you walked in. It smelled lovely. Lydia was like, what is that smell? If it's that, I'm getting it. And I said, it will be. If it's on display at the front of the store, that's the spray that they're using. And it was lovely. So we both picked up one of these oils, Bergamot and Cedar. Really nice again for this time of the year. And then you know the Amalfi lemon scent I got over summer from them? It's slightly different packaging. I asked, are they transitioning to this new packaging? He said, no, those are like a premium, like addition. The Amalfi lemon range has like duplicated now as amber. So they've got all of their like premium packaging branding that looks slightly different, including this one, the little oil, but yeah, amber. And it's a very warm, Oh, very warm scent. It's like kind of like a cashmere kind of scent. Really nice. So anyway, my little white company purchases. Oh, very happy with them. And then just a couple of um, random purchases which I've put to one side to share with you before I show you their home scents bits because I've actually got two bags full of stuff to share with you. But popped into B&M the other day just to pick up some cleaning supplies and had a quick look at the autumn harvest range, as well as a look down the Christmas aisles. Yes, I'm saying it, and yes, I actually bought some stuff. I'm putting that to one side, because we're on autumn. We're not quite at Christmas yet. Um, but £2.50, I thought this was cute, a little pumpkin baking tray. Um, so yeah, we could maybe do a little pumpkin baking of some kind, because I've got the little cupcake cases as well from Home Sense that I've shown previously. So maybe in my autumn decorate video with me, or upcoming vlogs I'll do some autumn baking and then I also picked up these again ahead of decorating for autumn and Christmas I guess these little over the door wreath hooks but look they're clear acrylic which I thought was genius to be able to not detract from the beautiful wreath they were like quite inexpensive so I'll leave them linked below and then home sense oh just you wait got two new cushions to the point where I'm actually regretting buying that Matalan one now, which is lovely, don't get me wrong, but the quality of this, I just didn't think I'd be able to find something like this in the UK. So when they brought this out, I was so happy, so, so happy. The Matalan one's 12 pounds, so it's half the price, because this is 24.99, but the quality, look at the thickness and chunkiness to this cushion, super soft as well, and just a really nice kind of like threaded embossed, textured pumpkin cushion as well as this one so we have a couple of neutral textured gorgeous pumpkin cushions this one's like a bolster shape as well i might even put this on our bed oh yeah i might do that and then that one could go on the sofa maybe i might put the matala one maybe in barney's bed so he can have a little autumn cushion although i did buy the leaf one which i might put in his bed i don't know you'll see all that in my next video i've still yet to decide what is going where but this one was how much was this i think it was no the price isn't on it but i think it was the same and then what else have we got in here oh i've got um a candle that i was keeping my eyes peeled for i've got one already in bergamot and thick is it? It's on our kitchen shelf. And I saw that they brought out some matching ones in different scents. So they've got honey crisp, crisp harvest, I think. I showed it on the vlog footage. And then this one, which I thought I would go for, apple cider. These aren't cheap, 
Oh, it smells good. These ones are $16.99. They're from Sand and Fog, and it even says on there, please reuse me. So obviously, once burnt out, I mean, our bergamot one on our kitchen shelf, I've kept there for the aesthetics. I just think these, like, ceramic pots are beautiful to keep on display. So yeah, that was very much autumn vibes. I feel like I'm literally just gonna switch the bergamot one for this one this year. And then when it's not autumn, I'll get the bergamot one back out. They might even, who knows, bring out a similar one for Christmas. I got Barney a little dog toy for when I do a bit of a Halloween decorate with me. I'll bring this one out, $4.99. It's a little pumpkin spice puppuccino squeaker toy. Oh, I got a Christmas thing. I'll just quickly show you, but I will just pop it straight in the Christmas section. Um, Christmas box, storage box. It's just a throw ultra plush printed throw super soft and cozy but it's got like it's cream with stags on it i feel like i shouldn't be showing christmas stuff already but um i guess this doesn't have to be christmas but i am going to be keeping that for christmas that was 16.99 i got these oh my goodness i got some um more napkins not napkins tea towels and then these cute little mini oven mitts from cuisine art $6.99 these ones are, adorable. Definitely getting these out in my Halloween decorate with me. And then the matching, again from Cuisine Art, little um, set of two tea towels with this gorgeous, chunky pup in and amongst some pumpkins. And it's kind of making me wish we had Barney as a puppy during pumpkin picking season. We didn't, he was born end of November. So we picked him up in January. So by the time October came around, he was already quite big. And it, last year we got some pumpkin picking photos, but obviously he's a fully grown dog by that point. But look, 5 99 for them. And then I also saw these. And I thought these were like really rustic, wholesome, like farmhouse kitchen style. There are little toadstools on there as well as the leaves and the pumpkins. Just a really nice kind of illustration from a brand called shabby chic and these were 4 99 for a pack of two sticking with the toadstool theme i've not gone overboard because i don't love it it's okay and yes it brings autumn in without it being pumpkins all the time so i do like that element but i just didn't want to go toadstool crazy so i've got like a little throw from asda which i might put on the dog bed um do i have anything else i feel like there might be one other thing that i've picked up i can't remember but i saw these prints from TK Maxx and I thought I would pick them up because I can put them up for autumn as like decoration but then obviously easily switch out the prints on the inside for photos for prints for other seasons and I just they had a few different designs but these two were my favorite they were 12 99 each these were more Halloween decorate how cute are they they are 12 99 and they are a set of three little felt ghosts they had different ones as well with like little devils in which I was tempted for but I decided to go for these ones a little pumpkin a little bat and a little candy corn yeah so adorable love them and then what else did I get oh this little pump uh, little pumpkin little candle which I thought because I've got quite a lot of like chunky candles now there are sometimes occasions where I'll need like on a coffee table book or whatever next to something a smaller candle and yeah, I got this and I thought it was cute. It was nice and I feel like it's quite neutral. It's not too garish. It's just nice and simple. Love the font. Just says time pumpkin. So I feel like that will work really well in the kitchen, especially as our island is green. Nice like mango wood lid. And these small ones, yeah, really nice. These small ones were only 3 99 And then let's give this a whiff because 7 99 and it's from Mango Man Fragrance Department Citrus 12. I like citrusy scents and I thought even as a room fragrance this might be quite nice. It sent notes on it I had a quick read of and I thought they sounded nice. So it's bergamot, grapefruit, mandarin, lemon, alleyheads, aromatic ginger, green leaves, elemi, dry amber, vetiver and musk. So I feel like it's a scent that I'll actually really like. And I do, I know it's from the men's rate, but I do tend to opt for unisex or if not men's fragrances. Oh wow, how nice is the bottle as well? Okay, that's, that's, yeah. 
I wouldn't say that's too, is it, no, it's not too masculine -y, that one, masculine -y. It's quite, it's deep, but fresh. I feel like, would that be nice as a room fragrance? I feel like it's too nice to be a room fragrance. I did get one other thing, and this is actually something that I thought I would mention to you guys, because, where's my phone, here we go. Last night, I asked on Instagram to basically expand our games cupboard section game section within our cupboards downstairs because now that we host more i just think it's nice to have some more games so yeah i've got a couple and i asked on instagram some of your guys absolute favorites so i'm going to go through that list because quite a few of you have said share what everyone's saying so i feel like some of you might also be interested but i did actually pick this one up in tk maxx and it was RRP of £30, but reduced to £6.99, so I thought that was pretty good. It's Trivial Pursuit, but not any Trivial Pursuit. It's suitable for the decades 2010 to 2020, so it might be quite fun for us to have one that's not, like, ancient and out of date. Because <laughs> our family Trivial Pursuit at home, sometimes some of the questions you're like, oh, well, that's obvious that this is an old game. Sometimes about, like, people who are no longer here, and you're just like, well, that's... And let me go and get some scissors. I guess I'll ask you guys as well in case you didn't see my Instagram story. But if you've got any other recommendations apart from this list I'm going to give you, if you can think of anything else, do let me know. Let's just ask a couple of questions just to give you an idea. There's different categories. Let's do a little quiz. Let's see who can get these right. I'm going to ask, get one card and ask every single question. So let's start with playlist. Which band released the album 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 humans in 2017 after a seven year hiatus gorillas i don't know gorillas yay number two binge worthy category replacing a family of italian puppets dominic west appeared as a melodramatic dad in a 2017 tv advert for which pasta sauce brand dolmeo dolmeo which US politician, this next category, news alert. Which US politician who died in 2018 celebrated some of his last birthdays during parachute jumps? Name a US politician. Not very good for my politics. Donald Trump. George H.W. Bush. The last time was on... Oh, and also he's not dead. <laughs> the last time was on the late US president's 90th birthday. Wow. In 2014. Imagine that. Doing a parachute jump at 90. Next category, hashtag culture. Which print comic celebrated his 80th anniversary in 2018? Oh, the Beano. Could have guessed at that, I guess. Comedian author David Williams guest edited the anniversary issue. Category orange, game on. Which classic board game released a version subtitled Longest Game Ever? in 2019. Longest game ever. Monopoly? Yay, Monopoly. What, this last category, break the internet. What popular GIF created in 2017 has come to be used in order to express a look of incredulity or disbelief? Blinking white guy meme. That's a bit hard, isn't it? Let me give you a bit of a list of what people have been um recommending on my instagram let's have a look cluedo owen x guess who scrabble saw loser articulate sequence beat that boggle rummy cub ingenuous banker five of a kind logo and categories quicks yatsy ticket to ride okay play catan telestration scrawl settlers of catan chicken versus hot dog don't know that one Dixit, five second rule, we've got five second rule, that's quite good. Sequence, risk, cards against humanity, we've got that one. Sorry, I agree, sorry, someone says sorry is honestly a must, it is such a classic. Game of life, that was like a family game for us. A good old standard card deck, totally agree. Double, double can be quite good. Uno, we've got Jenga. Ludo, which is like sorry. Herd mentality, Scotland Yard, and then I think that's it. I've heard Bananagrams is another good one. Is that what it's called, Bananagrams? 
Um, we just bought the pizza game off TikTok, which me and ba uh, me and Barney, <laughs> me and Tom have played. Piers for Pizza, it's called. This set on John Lewis. So essentially, you've got three different uh, words or categories. It's like the category. In fact, I think I showed it in a vlog that I picked this up recently. That is everything that I've got to share with you. I feel like we should go down and do those spices now. I did run out and grab some. Um, some extras just so that I can fill them all. So yeah, let's go do that. You may remember this is our pantry from my recent pantry video. And this is where we keep all our spices. So this is what it's currently looking like. I just got this rack from B&M. It's like extendable rack. And these are all the spices that we currently have. And then I've got some spice pots up there, which I'm gonna bring down. And then these are what I've ordered from Amazon, so it comes with a little funnel. I picked up 12 um, jar uh, like containers, but you can get like 32, I think was the other amount that you could get. And it comes with all of these um, stickers. And they even come with some blank as well, which is perfect, because then you can just write on if you've got any, I mean, what are these? Zartar. Umami, definitely don't have a lot of these. Old Bay, L Lowry's Seasoning, Cassia, never heard of that before. Ooh, pumpkin spice. Everything but the bagel, what is that? I've never heard of that before. Anyway, arrowroot, apple pie. So is that, that must be like apple pie seasoning. But anyway, let's uh, crack on and get these decanted. Let me show you these. They do also come with these which i guess you can pop on the top of the container and just write the expiry date on or at the bottom and this is what they look like how nice so they're like a dark wood lid and then the top of it as well comes with either the option to open that side and sprinkle out more or to have these ones perfect these are great value for money as well well, I totally get how people would say, oh, why bother with that? Like, you're either this sort of person or you're not, I feel, because I actually get enjoyment out of this. So, I mean, people say, oh, why would anyone bother? I can't relate, hun, because I say, why would anyone not? Just gives me great pleasure decanting all of these mustard seeds into their individual pots. Our finished spice cupboard looks much better. I managed to fit the ones that like are different to these Amazon ones just on this kind of like secondary shelf bit, the extendable bit, which I think looks a bit better that it's sectioned off. Kind of like spaced out as well so that you can see from one front on, you can kind of see which rather than them being in front of each other like that, you can kind of see what they are a bit better. But yeah, that is my finished spice section within our pantry let me know what you think again i'll leave leave these ones linked linked below these ones just if you are interested where this set of four were from aldi ages ago and these were thrifted but they were from zara home originally i had a delivery earlier and i'm yet to try them on so i thought i would might as well do it with you guys a bit of a first impressions going but it's from Abercrombie and Fitch and I wanted to invest in some good jeans that are comfy that I like 
And when I've previously gone into Abercrombie & Fitch, I've kind of like sussed out the style that I like and the size that I am. So we'll try them on together. I did also, whilst I was there, pick up, um, whilst I was there, whilst I was online, I picked up this skirt as well. So I thought this would look really nice in like autumn, although it is quite pinky. I feel like I need to put you by the window. I did get this in a medium. Can you see it's like a pinky nude, quite light and also very long. I'm not sure this will fit. This being a medium, I feel like a small would have been better. Let me grab a t-shirt to try these bits on with. Seeing as though we're doing an Abercrombie haul, we'll do a little Abercrombie t-shirt. These are some of my favorites. I will leave all of these links, but I'll leave this uh, t-shirt link for you as well. Just coming off camera for a second whilst I try this on. Okay, just excuse the fact that this t-shirt needs a bit of a steam. But this is what the skirt looks like. I do like it. It's just, it's too big for me. So I would need to try a small. Um, I feel like, yeah, if it fit nicer, then I would really like this a lot. But too big, unfortunately. But do you kind of get the, get the idea of the look, you know? A nice little satiny slip skirt. It's not even satin, it's like a double lined, um, kind of dressier fabric, I would say, but super comfy. So, again, like leading into autumn, winter with knitwear paired with it, a nice cozy jumper, or just like for now, basic white tee and some little white trainers. Uh, but yeah, too big, unfortunately, so that one's gonna have to go back. Okay, so all the jeans that I got, they're in the exact same fit, which are. 90s ultra high rise straight i think that's what they're called and i got them from the curve love range in a size 28 they are quite long though so i'm thinking that i might be better off with a 28 short rather than a 28 regular length and um, this is the black pair and the reason why i like the curve love range is because they don't gape at the back you know that problem that um bigger bummed gals will often have whereby it gapes at the back this one doesn't do that so yeah i am just trying to deliberate though because obviously these are all going to fit the same i'll just show you them all on anyway in the different colors but they are all going to fit the same and i am thinking they are quite long so i might try the petite version okay so this is the next color that i got it's like a kind of creamy off-white color i don't know if it's because of the thread or something but the difference between these and the ones that I tried on before, these feel a bit comfier, like a bit more flexible, less stiff. So yeah, I don't know if that's because they're black, I don't know. Um, but exact same fit other than the stiffness of the other ones, but same leg length, same fit, nice and comfortable. Don't gape at the back on the waist. And yeah, I do really like these. Okay, next up, we've got a classic blue. I love this shade, and I'm actually thinking, yet yeah, again, these feel a lot comfier than the dark pair. Maybe I'll just keep these and send the black ones back. Um, but what do you guys think on the length? Should I try the petite version or not? Just for sizing reference, if you're unsure as well. So I've got 28, but there's another size reference. Now, I remember from working in Hollister and also shopping Lululemon, American sizes, you've got to size up twice. So these are a six in Abercrombie. So not an eight, but a 10, UK 10 equivalent. Um, just if you were unsure, but yeah, they feel nice. I feel like I love the color. I really like them, really like them. And the fact that they've got them in the sale as well. Love that. Um, oh, I don't know what to do. Do I go for the small or keep these? Not sure. Also, oh my gosh, this, just, just look in the mirror. Does that look darker? There's like a patch on the zip that looks darker. I don't know how I feel about that. Can you see? It looks like it's almost wet. It's not wet, guys. <laughs> I have not wet myself. There's just like a dark patch there. Oh yeah, that's really annoying. <laughs> it just looks a bit silly. It doesn't look silly in real life, but I feel like on camera it's more noticeable. Okay, this is the final color that I got. It's like a stone kind of color, just to 
compare against the cream so you can see the difference. Cream, like a cool toned stone colour. What do you guys think? Everything else is the exact same, same fit, comfort, um, length. Um, yeah, help me out. What do I do? Do I try the petite? If I just roll them up, which I don't want them to be rolled up, that's the only thing. So I feel like rolled up, they look more casual. And I, I don't want, yeah, I don't want them to be rolled up. I feel like I'm gonna prefer the shorter length, which is a bit of a pain, but also if I try the blue ones in the shorter length as well, then hopefully um, they'll be able to send some without what looks to be a wet patch on the crotch. But yeah, that's what they look like turned up. If you did like that look, which I do like, I just, uh, I want them to, to fit. I felt like I had a list then. <laughs> Guys, I'm halfway through my Invisalign journey already. How exciting. This is the update. Looking straight. Um, do you see my tongue tied then? Does anyone else tongue tied? Hands up for the tongue tied people. Which basically means my tongue is attached to the bottom of my mouth. And it has been since birth. It's come away a little bit over time. But um, yeah, anyone else tongue tied? Um, but yeah, Invisalign, we're halfway through. Six, seven, six more weeks to go. Woo anyway, I feel like for the rest of this afternoon, I'm gonna take the dog out, get a bit of a stretch of the legs, have a good run around, him have a good run around, me walk alongside. Um, although I do fancy run, I just feel like it's probably a bit too hot. Not for me, but more so for the dog to go for a run. Um, so yes, we might take him for a little walk. Tom is busy chefing away. He's cooking some kind of beef. I'll probably include some clips so you can see Chef Tom strikes again. I'm really considering, or he is actually really considering setting up some kind of a TikTok or Instagram page for all of his recipes. Now that we've obviously got the kitchen and the outdoor garden and everything, he is loving his cooking. He is in his element. It's probably his favorite thing to do. He loves cricket, but he loves cooking, which I'm not complaining about. Although it does mean that he's a creative cook, so I have the entire kitchen to clean every time he cooks a meal. But I can't complain because he cooks us delicious food. So yeah, he is cooking. I'm gonna take the dog out for a quick walk. We're gonna have a chilled evening. I'm gonna watch some more Sunrise Turn Pretty because I'm loving that. Just have a nice, relaxed afternoon slash evening. Arizona garden, stucco in the heat. Let me take you dancing. Let me get you on your feet. Arizona garden with my little cactus flower. Let the day slip away in the golden hour. Got nothing but time and music and a sweet cold drink in the heat. Oh, I'll be.